My story is about Aviation Heritage Park and how the members of it come together to bring back history in a way that people now can appreciate it. It's about how these Air Force pilots find ways to commemorate other Air Force pilots by renovating airplanes. I actually started working on this my freshman year and moving from Illinois to Kentucky, I kind of didn't know what Bowling Green was going to be about and this story brought me into realizing the community here and it, it's made me learn that people can come together through anything and they can create something and it didn't matter if you were part of the crew renovating it. By the end of you know getting footage and doing everything, I felt like I was a part of the family there and you know I learned what it is to be part of Bowling Green and it's a very proud group of people who are you know very excited to share what they've done and the big thing they kept telling me is how they want it to impact future generations. A big thing for me is my grandfather passed away and um, he used to always tell stories and we laughed about, <laughs> sorry, we laughed about the fact that he would always say I'm gonna tell you something or let me tell you about that and um, I don't have those stories anymore. So I get to get those stories from other people now and that is so special to be able to figure out that those times sitting on a back porch wasn't just for nothing but it was making me discover who I wanted to be and being able to share and tell stories they'll never be able to leave now and they'll stick with people and that's what was so important about being a storyteller for me was being able to share and uh, and learn from other people. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, zooming to meet our thunder. Have a boys, give it the gun. Give it the gun. Down we dive, spouting our flame from under. There are a number of aviators in the South Central Kentucky that have made significant contributions to the history of aviation. Their stories go largely untold. So we're continuously trying to, to bring stories to the community that people can relate to. And that's what Aviation Heritage Park's mission is. This particular F-111 that we just finished restoring has a soft spot in my heart. We had always wanted uh, for some time to get an F-111 because we wanted to tell the story of Operation El Dorado Canyon, which was the raid on Libya in 1986. When we flew the Libya raid, I was a commander of the 493rd Tactical Fighter Squadron. We really wanted Arnie's airplane, which is owned by the Air Force Museum up in Dayton, Ohio, and they said, no, you can't have that one. So we got the, the next best thing we could. The 178 Warhorse flew on the mission while that was a special tie to what we wanted to tell. There's a lot of networking to be able to round up the parts, and somebody's usually got one. It's just a matter of finding it. The airplane has to be what's called demilitarized. They had to make the airplane safe for us to bring it to Bowling Green. But the cockpit was left restored in the sense that the engine instrument, flight control, all of the instrumentations that are in the cockpit, the faces are still there. Because the airplane's very large, had to be taken apart, the wings had to be taken off, the tail had to be taken off, transported to Bowling Green on three different flatbed trucks. The things that we have to do to an airplane really depend on the shape of the airplane when we receive it. In particular, it was in really excellent condition as far as physical structure. 
There wasn't any rebuilding that we had to do. Uh, we had to do some repair at certain places where uh, she had been rusted out. Little did we know that the paint that was painted on the airplane, once it was flown back to Cannon Air Force Base in Clovis, New Mexico, the paint that was used on it, we call it Mach 2 paint because we could not get the paint off. We used a process where we used a metal, a twisted wire grinding wheel to grind the paint off. And it was a very, very tedious process to grind that paint off without doing damage to the skin underneath. If you look at her today, the way she looks is exactly the way she looked when she launched on the Libya raid on uh, 14th of April, 1986, down to where the decals, uh, it, the paint scheme is exactly the way she looked the day she launched. At our annual hangar party every year, we try to have an airplane to, to display, to unveil to the public. And this past year, this past June, uh, we unveiled Warhorse to the public for the first time. This one was particularly special because we had uh, Arnie Squadron here. Some of the Libyan Raiders that were on the original, matter of fact, we had the, the, the original flight crew that flew this airplane actually had an opportunity to sit in the airplane while they were here, so it's a pretty big deal for us. The thing that made that evening so special is when we unveiled that airplane, when that parachute came up and they looked up, and they saw their name on the side of the airplane. I think I saw a little tear. Uh, I know there was one in my eye. And it was just a real thrill to see those guys climb up and get in that airplane after all those years.